Hi guys, so this is also a problem that Professor Spelio did in lecture. Um, okay, so in this problem, uh, we're dealing with um, angular or angular dynamics here, or rotational dynamics, um, and we have a pulley with like a mass that's hanging off of it. So the mass for the block is m, and then the mass for the pulley is this big M. Uh, and what's happening in this system is that this hanging mass is released and it's going to be falling down and this pulley is just going to kind of unravel the string that it's all raveled up in this pulley um, and then the as it begins to fall it's going to go cross a distance delta y basically it's going to fall a distance delta y so we're asked to find two things um, we want to find the acceleration of the block m in terms of little m big m and g and then the angular velocity w um, after it falls this distance delta y in terms of big m little m g, r, and delta y. So um, we're going to do this in two parts. So this video is just going to be part a. Okay. So before we start, I want to note that we have a no slip condition. So no slip condition is really important. What that means is basically that as this rope is unraveling, it's not slipping against the, the pulley. So it's maintaining contact, which means that the speed that this rope is unraveling is going to have this very specific relationship with the angular acceleration. So here's what that looks like. So just kind of explaining this drawing, what that means is if we have something that's spinning with a certain angular acceleration, so it's spinning this way in the way that I drew it for this picture, so spinning with some sort of angular acceleration, there's going to be this tangential acceleration AT, and, which going in both directions, and then the acceleration of the center of mass. So there's a relationship where the speed at which it spins is going to relate by an R. So R times angular acceleration will be equal to this tangential acceleration, or um, and or equal to this acceleration of the center of mass, which means just the center point, if we're trying to measure how quickly the center point is accelerating, just as this point, uh, point in space, this is the relationship. So our pulley is pinned here, so our center of mass is actually equal to zero. Um, so th this is just sort of like a gener general things that you can apply. If ACM is equal to zero, that does not mean that AT is equal to zero. We still have an AT for this problem. Our AT is going to be the tangent acceleration as the rope is coming off the pulley, uh, right? Um, and it's also going to be equal to our AY, okay? Which is what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the speed, the acceleration at which this block falls. Okay, so we know that we can use this relationship when we have rolling motion with no slip, which means that the string is unraveled, uh, unraveling at the same speed, right? With At this R alpha speed, and there isn't any slip to kind of take away from that acceleration or change it. Um, next, we know that we have a mass moment of inertia equal to one half m r squared. That's just given to us by the problem. That means that if we have a disk spinning uh, about its center, that's going to be its mass moment of inertia. Okay. Uh, then we have a general equation for torque, uh, just to kind of introduce that. Uh, what that means is, let me maybe draw it so it's, we'll look at a right angle torque because I think it's a little bit easier to understand. Uh, it's if we apply a force, right, at a certain distance, okay, at a certain distance from a point and at a certain angle, uh, we are going to cause something to rotate, right? So if I apply a force here, right, at that distance, it would cause something to rotate in this direction, right? Um, so when we're looking at torque, we're looking at a force acting on a lever arm at an angle and how it causes rotation. Okay. One of the things to note about mass moment of inertia uh, mass moment of inertia is the object's resistance to change in rotational momentum. It's very similar to just mass for linear acceleration. It's just the version of mass that we use for angular acceleration. Okay. Uh, the units are a little bit different though. Okay. So, all right. Number one, we're going to find the acceleration of block M in terms of little m, big M, and g. Okay. So we're going to do this systematically for the, all of these problems. One, we're going to draw a free body diagram. Two, we're going to do sum of forces and sum of torques, okay? The main difference between dynamics and rotational dynamics is that we just have this additional sum of torques equation, and we'll see how that works in our problem. Uh, three, what we're going to do is we're going to look at any additional relationships we might have. For example, one through three, that no slip condition will definitely help us. So no slip, right? Uh, and then four, algebra. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So one, let's do a free body diagram. So when we do a free body diagram, we want to look at all of the masses that we have, and we're going to we're going to break them up to have their own free body diagrams. Okay, 
So this is my first mass, right, and this is my second mass. So one thing to note about dealing with rotational dynamics is that where we're used to modeling things as point forces, for example, for this object, I can just do the weight of the object and then the tension pulling up of the rope and just model it like a point force. Um, for objects that are experiencing um, or undergoing rotational dynamics, we need to actually keep the full object because we need the radius for our torque equation. So we need to know where exactly the force is acting uh, with respect to um, the distance from whatever the rotation point is. Okay. All right. So in this case, so we have tension that's coming up just from this hanging mass, and then we have the weight of the hanging mass. Okay. And tension is internal to the rope, right? And so if we have something that's pulling down, uh, or we have a weight, this tension is pulling up. But over here, our tension would be pulling down, right? Because they're both internal forces. So these two tensions would be uh, equal in magnitude and just have different directions. OK, so what else do we have acting here? Um, we also have a normal force and a weight for the pulley. Normally, these are not modeled for pulleys, but the way Professor Spilio did included this, um, they're often treated as internal forces and ignored. Um, maybe a good way to think about it is like if you have a little pin kind of in the center and it's resting on the, the top circle of the like the interior pulley disc, you'd have a normal force kind of keeping it there, and then you would still have the um, the weight of the object like push, pushing down. Um, it's not very important for this problem. Um, but just so you are aware, it's just kind of the pinning force there. Okay, so now, one, we did our free body diagram. Uh, two, uh, we are going to do our sum of forces equations. So we're going to do sum of forces in the y. Well, let's look at uh, sum of forces for each of our objects, right? So what objects do we have? We have this mass with the pulley, and then we have a little mass with the square. Okay, so we're going to do sum of forces in the x, sum of forces in the y, and sum of torques. Sum of forces in the x, sum of forces in the y, and sum of torques. Okay. So what can we right away say is zero for each of these? Okay, so for our pulley, what do we have? We just have forces in the y direction for our pulley, right? These are vertical, these are vertical. So we know that sum of forces in the x is zero. What about our hanging mass? Again, also no x forces, so that's just zero. Um, all right, so, and then our little mass hanging here. Um, do we have any torque acting? It's not spinning, there's no rotation, so we know there's zero torque. Um, so let's see what we have left here. Okay, sum of forces in the y for the pulley. Um, well, we have n minus m g minus t, uh, and in this case, um, because the pulley itself, so we're looking at the pulley itself, this pulley is pinned at a location, there is no y acceleration, there's no x acceleration, it's not moving, it's just rotating. Um, so we're saying that ACM for the pulley, or basically it's not, there's no movement of its center of mass, it's pull, pinned in the x and the y, so this is equal to zero. Okay, um, what about sum of forces in the y for m here? We're just going to pick off the easy ones first, right? Sum of forces in the y for the m, I have t minus mg is equal to what? Um, well, from the problem, I know that this mass is falling, right, as this pulley is unraveling. And so I do have some acceleration, right? And for reasons that we talked about before, we know that we're going to have this like AT is equal to AY. Um, but we're just going to call that we're going to call it A. So we have mass times some acceleration A. Okay. Um, and we do know that that A is going to be equal to R times alpha. Okay. So we have an additional equation because we have a no-slip condition, right? Because this is going to be the tangent acceleration coming off of the circle, we can say that what we choose for our, our A is going to be equal to our alpha. OK, so, um, so far so good. So what about the last thing over here, torque? Um, OK, so our equation for torque, if we recall what we wrote up there, it's equal to R times F times sine of theta. Um, so first, let's look at all of the forces that we have acting here. For the normal force and the weight force, um, note that they're acting like through the line of the radius, so they're not at any distance away from the radius. So if I were to write the torque right for the normal force or the torque for the weight, um, it would be equal to zero, right, times the normal force times sine of theta, or zero times mg sine of theta. 
So these are both equal to zero and they don't contribute any torque. Uh, which would kind of make sense if you're pushing on the center of an object uh, expecting it to spin um, you are not going to be successful right it wouldn't make sense that it's spinning um, so same thing is happening here okay so we just know that these two are equal to zero because there is no radius um, they're not acting any distance away from the center they're just pushing on the center point which is not going to cause a rotation if you're just pushing on the center of mass okay what about this last one for tension? So torque due to the tension force. Okay, so what is our R value here? Well, it's actually the radius of the circle, right? This is the distance the force is away. Um, and then our force obviously is the tension force, right? And then what's the angle? Um, well, this is the angle that we make with our, with our um, moment arm essentially, or our radius. Um, and that's going to be 90 degrees, right? Um, and we know that sine of 90 degrees is just equal to one. Uh, so in this case, for our torque, uh, it's just going to be equal to RT. Um, one last thing, though, uh, that we didn't pay attention to. Um, what is the, the sign convention for our torque? Um, so by convention, for a positive torque, a positive torque moves in a counterclockwise direction, and a negative torque, negative torque moves in a clockwise direction. So Okay, and this is always by convention. So for this torque, what direction would this be causing spin? So this is causing the object, right, to spin this way, right? It would be pulling, pulling down, so causing it to spin this way as it's unraveling. That is clockwise. Um, because it's clockwise, we know that we have a negative torque, okay? So our torque over here is gonna be equal to negative RT, right? And similar to just what we talked about for the F equals MA equations, um, when we do sum of forces for our torques, um, we set them equal to I alpha. So by convention, uh, force is equal to mass times acceleration, and torque is equal to I alpha, right? Sum of torques. So sum of forces, sum of torques. So in this case, because our torque is non-zero, um, we know that we do have some angular acceleration here, right? And we do have some rotation. Okay, so we're setting it equal to this. So, all right, now let's see what we can do. So we're trying to find this, this A value, the acceleration that the little mass here is falling. Okay, the acceleration that that mass is experiencing. Okay, and so we did our free body diagrams for these guys. Okay, uh, we found our sum of forces equations. Now let's look at our, let's see what we can use from our sum of forces equations and maybe how we can use some of our other relationships. Okay, so we can take this guy, right, and we can relate this angular acceleration with this R alpha, okay? Um, also, we have the acceleration that we need in this equation here, right? Um, now, let's see. Is that everything we need, right? We have two equations. Um, we don't know tension, but if we put these together, I think we can cancel out our tension. Um, we also know... We also know I is equal to one half m r squared, okay? So we can use that and plug it in, uh, and then we can rearrange things to try to solve our problem here. So let's give that a shot, okay? Let's take everything we have and see if we can put those pieces together. Okay, so I'm gonna call these equations one, two, three, and four. Okay, so let's first off take equation one, okay? And let's use three and four to sub, okay? So we have negative R times the tension is equal to I alpha, okay? So what's that gonna look like? Negative R times the tension is equal to um, one half M R squared, right? Times, um, and then if I wanna sub out my alpha, right? I know that my alpha is equal to A over R. Okay, so let's plug in A over R, because this A is what I'm trying to solve for, okay? Um, all right, so far so good. Um, I also know that this little r right here is equal to just the radius of my circle. So the, the distance for this force that's creating a torque is also equal to the radius of my circle. So I can just sub out the, so just say that this r is equal to the same one. I could have done that right away. I'm just, sorry about that. Um, okay, so now I can cancel some things, right? One half um, r times a. Um, so I have negative RT is equal to one half 
MRA. Uh, then I can cancel out one more R, right? Cancel these. So I have my negative T is equal to one half MA. Oh wow, okay, great. So I've canceled out quite a few things here. Okay, now uh, what other equations do I have? Well, I didn't use um, I didn't use this equation number two uh, that also has acceleration in there, and I can cancel out some other things using equation number two, right? So I have um, T minus mg is equal to ma, this a being the y acceleration, right, as the object is falling, equal to the tangent acceleration coming off of that spinning pulley. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add this equation. I'm going to add negative t, right, equals one half ma. I'm just going to add these two together, okay? So then I'm going to end up with, t like, these t's will cancel, right? It'll be like t, t minus t. I'm adding them, okay? And then I'm going to have negative mg is equal to ma plus one half ma. Okay, um, so let me pull out my acceleration, uh, m plus one half times this large m. Okay, and so I'm going to end up with negative mg, and I'm going to just divide by this m plus one half m so I can leave acceleration by itself on this side. Okay, so there we go. Uh, so this is our solution. So what our solution is telling us is that this is the speed, okay, that the, or the, sorry, not the speed, this is the acceleration, right, at which this mass, this little mass here is falling, okay, and it's also equal to this at, this tangent acceleration of the spinning object as it's falling. Okay, um, cool, so let's move on to part b.